I need to take a breath. I'm here to talk about grief today. I just locked the doors, so get ready to party. Ever been to a pity party? It's a real good time. I've been to a party or two, only I'm not talking about St. Patrick's Day or spring break. I have a little story to tell. When I was 10, I went to my grandpa's funeral. Afterwards, I went to my Grammy's house for some sandwiches and sweets. I walk into the house and I hear laughing. And I thought, that's weird. I was even a little offended. My 10-year-old self thought, what is all this partying about? My grandpa just died. I now know that laughter and get-togethers is a part of grief. But as a child, I didn't see it that way. Well, I'm not 10 anymore. I read about the stages of grief. It meant nothing to me. In the beginning, my thoughts and feelings were changing by the moment. My brain felt more like a ball of messy yarn. The yarn would ravel up one day and unravel the next. I got through it, though, one day at a time. I also kept my mask handy. Grief is really love with no place to go. When I grieved, my heart felt lost in pain. With grief, we think mostly of death, but it's so much more than that. My first heartbreak was many years ago. It was a high school breakup, I thought. It was the end of the world. I went home, I took a handful of Tylenol to stop the pain, only it didn't help. Two years later, I was sexually assaulted at a university party. I kept it secret for over 30 years. Two years later again, I got married. Only my husband had several addiction issues. I felt the need to hide it all. I now know that hiding pain only makes it worse. Okay, who likes to play games here? We like playing games at a party, right? Let's call it Have You Ever. I'm going to ask seven questions, and at the end of the seven questions, I'm going to ask you to put your hand up if you answer yes to any of the questions. Pay close attention. Are you ready? Okay, let's get started anyhow. Have you ever had a loving relationship fail? Not just romantic. Have you ever not got accepted into that dream program at school or lost a job? Have you ever had a miscarriage, you or a loved one? Have you ever had a loved one die, a spouse? immediate family, a close relative, or a friend? Have you ever experienced trauma such as physical, mental, or sexual abuse, or a life-changing illness or accident? Have you ever lost a beloved pet? Have you ever experienced loss and pain and it's not on this list? Okay, hands up now if you answer yes to any of these questions. Please keep them up for a moment. You would think I would get a free pass, being the grief lady and all, but I guess Canada Post lost it again. Here is my grief list. It is the same as yours. All hands are up now, including me. Now, please take a moment and look around the room. Looks like we have a few things in common. Like we are all going to die. Or there is a 100% chance you will or have already experienced grief in your life. Whew, take a breath now, relax. I needed that too. Have you ever had that holy F event in your life? It brought you to your knees. 
It felt like the life that you built was thrown into a dumpster fire. I did. I lost my late spouse, Barry, to suicide 12 years ago, yesterday. He tragically lost his battle to mental illness. He was only 43. I was blindsided, and it was the worst day of my life. Suicide loss is complicated and very traumatic. I wore my mask at first, but thankfully I did get help, and I needed to talk about it. Ten years later, my dad died. He was 80, but it still felt sudden to me. I was not ready or prepared to say goodbye. One of my worst fears growing up was losing a parent. Last year, I lost my beautiful Sheltie dog, Roxy, suddenly to cancer. She was only four. I was heartbroken, and I still am. Pet loss is a real thing. Trust me, I know. All my losses are very unique because no two griefs are ever alike. I think we have a superhuman hidden strength. Call it what you want, faith, science, or the dead holding us up. I did a reading in front of Barry's open casket only two days after he died by suicide. I also did a reading at my dad's funeral Someone had to be holding me up. Think about it. Most can't get in front of a crowd on a good day. Never underestimate your superhuman hidden strength. It helps us do things we never thought possible. After Barry died, I spent most of my time being sad like black licorice in a jar. I call it my sad jar. Only I didn't want to be sad all the time. I wanted happiness too. What happens when we spend too much time in the dark? We forget what joy feels like. But imagine you had your own jar. Let's call it a joy jar. You can add pieces of joy alongside of your grief. At first, it may be very small, maybe the size of an M&M candy. Maybe it's the taste of that M&M candy. But over time, you can fill it with more hope and joy, like time with friends or family. Maybe it's feel-good books or yoga. You have to try new things to find out what resonates with you. The more time I spent in my joy jar, my sad jar declined. I felt the shift inside of me. Some new doors opened, and some I no longer needed closed. When a new door opened, I was open to exploring new possibilities. A few rules to your joy jar. Keep it healthy, legal, and sober because too much wine in your joy jar is going to make your candy soggy. My grief journey often felt like driving through thick fog. I couldn't see 20 feet in front of me. I just wanted to make it through the fog alive. I didn't know the destination, and making the wrong turn was scary. I took a chance, though, and I made the turn anyways. Brain fog is a real thing after loss and can make decision-making very hard. However, I believe if decisions are made with a positive intention, it will be OK, even if it doesn't go as planned. Ever look back and see why things didn't go as planned? You can now see why you kicked that loser to the curb. I mean, why the relationship didn't work out. 
I still want a massager sometimes. It's my grief, and I will cry if I want to. My worst days were birthdays and death anniversaries. Yesterday was a death anniversary. I wanted my sad jar, but it passes more quickly now. Yesterday, I hit a grief wave, but today, my waves are calm. After Barry died, my life became a big puzzle. So many unanswered questions, like why didn't I see it coming? Why couldn't have I saved him? Being stuck in negative thinking is a pathway to darkness, that I know. I didn't want that. I believe what we tell ourselves really does matter. Did you know that you can turn a negative thought into a positive thought just by adding the word yet? Let's give it a try. I have not found the love of my life yet. See, I just told myself, the prize is yet to come. 23 years ago, I had an aha moment. It changed everything for me. After my failed marriage, when I became a newly certified single mom with two daughters, I was driving home from the grocery store. It was a cold winter day in my junker car. It had a flat tire, so I had a donut on the car, if you know what that is. <laughs> there was no heat in the car, it didn't work, and I couldn't really afford to get it fixed. I see my two daughters in the back seat, bundled up like little snowmen. I was failing them and me. I promised that day things would change, and they did. I went back to school and I finished my degree. I got my dream job. I made more money. I kicked the thrift store to the curb. Well, actually, I do still like a good treasure hunt. My new life eventually included Barry. I was on top of the world. Only it didn't go as planned. Barry died 11 years later. I felt depleted. I wore my mask when needed. I survived, but not before feeling like a victim. To survive, I started bringing in pieces of joy alongside of my grief. Our decisions become our future. Each decision has the power to open new doors. My experiences and choices led me to becoming the grief lady, then a trainer, and eventually an author. The big shocker was when I became a hypnotherapist. Are you feeling sleepy? Just checking. Years ago, I started going to Al-Anon. I learned the serenity prayer. Al-Anon, for those who don't know, is a support group for families dealing with addictions. Focusing, the serenity prayer is about focusing only on what I could control. Eventually, this gave me the courage to leave my first marriage after 13 years. The serenity prayer was life-changing for me and for those that don't know it. You can Google it. I still use it today. Today, I am very blessed. Let me share. But first, let me say that prize that was yet to come, it did show up. Meet my husband, John. We've been married for eight years now. I'm his third. He's my third. We say three is a charm. Love you, hon. Very thankful for my two lovely daughters here today, Amanda and Alicia, and their husbands, and my four perfect grandbabies. One here today, Adeline. She's only three. <laughs> and I did get a new puppy. 
But let's not forget about my funny stepson, Tyler. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. A few, a few party favors or takeaways for you today as I end my talk. To the griever, it's back to the basics. Food, shelter, and a shower. Guests will appreciate the shower. Be sure to accept support and lots of it. Be sad. It's okay to not be okay. It's a part of grief. There is no deadlines to grief, so be patient with yourself and others. To friends and family supporting their loved ones, be patient. What is needed is going to change often. Don't try to fix it. It won't work. And you could become annoying if you try. Be sure to show up, listen up, make a call, send a text or a card, meet for coffee or a meal, maybe send some food, or even chat live on FaceTime or Zoom. But most importantly, show you care your way. To you all, life is short. There are no replays. So embrace those positive moments as they come. If decisions don't go as planned, it's okay. You will learn and grow from them. If you are feeling in the dark, talk about it. Please try. And cheers to filling your joy jar today. Thanks for having me. Thank you.